Welcome back everybody to part three. Time for more confusion and <laughs> watching me <laughs> wonder what the heck I'm doing. All right, so let's give you a little progress report. Um, I do believe that on the uh, front end board, we have a <clears throat> not totally bad, but going bad uh, Veracap Veractor diode. The only reason I say that is at low frequencies it works great. As you put higher voltages on it, it becomes a little more unstable. If I hit it with a little bit of freeze spray, it settles down for a while. Um, that isn't a hundred percent proof, but it is pretty con you know pretty convincing that that is at least a good probability. So I have one of those on order. When it comes in, I'll try to swap it out. But for right now, I have it working well enough that we can move on. So our next problem is we keep talking about the let's see if we can find the, the little d diagram here and of course I can't find the little diagram would help if I got the right paper huh okay so this is just a little section cut out of that encoder plate and if you look at the top this is called your muting code and it every 200 kilohertz it comes out of mute because it's over top of a station okay and they're broke up 91.1 91 you know 98.1 and then 98.3 up here every 200 kilohertz okay 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 99.3, like that. And whenever you're in between two of these, it's supposed to go into muting. The problem, however, and let me show you the circuit for that. So here's your little station indicator. And whenever this little red light lights up, that indicates that it is unmuted and ready to tune. And if you follow it, I highlighted it, it goes right up through this little transistor here. Um, and this, transi or this transistor right here is the phototransistor that controls the muting. And it comes out of here and goes into pin 3 of this Q20 chip, which I don't know what that is right now. I'm not looking it up, um, but Q20. So, basically what has to happen is whenever we get over top of an opening with this indicator, this light should trip this photosensor. This photosensor should come in and change the state, I'm sorry, right here of pin 3 of Q20, which will change the state of pin 1 of Q20. This should go from a high to a low. When that goes to a low, it'll turn this transistor on. If you notice, it's all diode logic. This transistor will then turn this light on, and at the same time, it will send a signal out to unmute the receiver. Now, right now, I have my scope connected to pin 1 of the output of this chip. So whenever this guy triggers, I should see this go from a high to a low. And when this goes to low, it'll unmute. You hear a sound. Now I also have my oscilloscope connected to the output uh, output terminal of the receiver. So this would be your what would go to the amplifier. And I have the other terminal, so I have the right channel here, left channel, goes into my little amplifier. I have this thing set up for 98 megahertz. I have a pretty strong signal and I have a modulation of 500 uh, or 400 hertz on there. Now, 
there's my scope connected to pin 1. There's your chip, Q20. Here's the oscilloscope. Now I'm going to just tune the channel and I want you to watch what happens. As you can see, nothing is happening. I'm not getting any change whatsoever. If I go to that resistor, which is that 47K, as I go over the channels, you can see it drops on a channel, off of a channel, on a channel, off of a channel. You can see it drops, but it doesn't go all the way down to zero. Now let me put it, put the scope back onto pin one of the Q20 chip. So back to the schematics, you can see what I'm talking about. So right now, all I'm doing is that 47K resistor was right here and the 11K is up here. This 11K, they both kind of follow one another. Um, and on the front tuning knob right down here, this little light should come on right here over the station and it does not. Now, this probe right here is connected to chassis ground. I just, this is just a ground wire. If I go on to pin 3 and I force it low, and we're safe to do that because we have that, one, that 11K resistor in there, okay, as a current limiter. If I go here on to pin 3, let me see if I can work around the camera. Pin 3. Well, sorry. I'm going to burn, burn this thing up. There it goes. Let me get out of the way here right here and you can see I can tune it right in and there it's tuned in now let me put the scope over here and if you look right here let's touch it in there again see what happens and I can drive the signal up a little bit and give it nice and clear. Now, that's where our problem is right now. It is not toggling. Now the chip works obviously because I can I can put a high and a low into the chip and I can get the thing get the receiver to unmute and it can tune. And actually, if you look down here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to get on this real close, see if it'll focus, there it goes, and I'm going to come around here, and let's see if we can get it to light up. See the light? That's what it's supposed to do whenever we get over, um, get over top of one of those, uh, little encoder strips. It's not working. It is working somewhat. You can see when the light passes over there the phototransistor is changing states but it's not changing states enough. Now the next million dollar question is is it because our light isn't producing enough light to unmute it or is it because there's a faulty component like a bad transistor or something somewhere. That's our next goal is to find that out. So I'm going to troubleshoot a little bit more and then we'll be back. But the good news is I am now able to get it to tune and it is not super accurate but it is tuning in the general range where it needs to be. So uh, that's all good news. Okay, how about a progress report? Got it turned on and watch the little light. How about that?
Now the radio is extremely deaf, but it's working now. And you're not going to believe what it is. Let me just kind of put you over here a little bit. And let's take a look at something here. You see anything that looks any different? Well, it was actually two things we had to change. Uh, the first thing was these LEDs. Um, I replaced the warm white LEDs with bright white. And that still didn't fix it. Um, I then had to actually bend them just slightly in uh, kind of up and just kind of up just a little bit to get them to focus a little bit further up. Now that I've done that, so far, it seems to be working. <sighs> Who would have ever believed it? <laughs> um, but it is working now. And uh, so now the radio is really deaf. We're going to have to finish aligning it. But I do have it somewhat working now. So note to all of you who run into problems with bulbs either use incandescent or if you do use LEDs they have to be really bright and you have to kind of bend them kind of like a, almost kind of like this a little bit so they're not straight they have to be angled ever slightly and you probably are better off using diffused LEDs I didn't have any diffused ones I could have buffed them up with some some emery cloth or something but they're working fine how they are now but this thing is extremely finicky about the light so you will have to use the right ones for that to work all the other transistors triggered perfectly but that one would not and uh, the reason it didn't it was at the extreme top end of the dial and therefore um, the light just wasn't intense enough getting up there so it was two directional from the LEDs so that took care of that now of course we still have some issues with our FM front end and everything but I think I'm getting that dialed in a little bit closer um, I do think that Varactor diode is going to eventually need replaced it's not real stable at higher frequencies but it is very stable at lower frequencies so when you put a higher voltage on it, um, that seems to be when that diode has some issues. So I will end up replacing that. But for right now, I think we have it close enough that we can at least get it to align now. So that's where we are. Okay, I'm going to call it a night tonight. Um, I'm, the Vericap diode is definitely rearing its ugly head now. At the low end, all of the adjustments now, all, the, all of the alignments are good. We can line it up. As you notice right now, I'm set at 90.1 megahertz. And uh, as you can see, nice clean sine wave. Um, I can drop my amplitude down, down. Uh, let's see here. If we go uh, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50, clear down to 50 dBF, and I'm still hearing it. 60 dBF, it's really good. So we're in pretty good shape here. But, here's the problem. Everything works good at the low end of the scale, but let's go up to, for instance, 102 megahertz. And if I tune up to 102, you can hear it. But it's very, very distorted. And that distortion, you cannot tune out of it. You can't align that out. And it's all over the place. If you look at the waveform, it's 
you can see it's tuned into the station, but it's there's all kind of distortion going on. And that's that Veracap diode, I'm pretty sure. I'm not positive, but uh, I'm going to call it a night on this one. Um, the tuner is working somewhat. We now have to repair some more things on it. <laughs> uh, this board, the synthesizer, is working now. Pretty well, at least. But I still can't get it to lock. Um, the, the PLL will not lock. I'm just going to have to look into that some more yet. But little by little, we're getting it to at least work. So, wow. <laughs> what a journey, huh? <laughs> so, that's it for now. And, uh, again, I wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health into your lives. And, uh, hope you all wish me the best on this one, because I sure need it. This one's been, this one's been quite a challenge, but I'm learning a lot about these tuners. Um, but talk about a useless talent, you know, you, you become an expert on this thing, and there's, you know, 50 of them in the world left. I don't know. Um you know but it is pretty interesting it's an interesting piece of technology and it's a lot of fun so we're going to keep chugging along until we get it to work i i'm kind of having a little more confidence now that i'm hearing rf go through it so there you are you all have a wonderful evening and uh we'll catch you on the next video bye bye for now